Oh, hello and welcome. And uh, feel free to write messages and ask me questions and, and send me greetings and tell me where you come from. <laughs> Selamat datang. Selamat datang. Okay, the room is filling up. Hello, Anya. <laughs> uh, Salamat datang, apa kabar? Okay, I'm going to wait for one more minute and until this room fills up and then we will start. Okay, so I'll give you about another, uh, another 50, 50 seconds or so. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, the room is filling up, so welcome. Salamat <laughs> datang. Yeah, I'm just getting ready. My slides ready. Okay. okay. So, question of the day. Kabar. Right, so there are 30 of us now. I think I can start. All right, so let's just begin. Um, all right, if you can see my screen, just let me know. I'm sharing it now. Can you see my screen? Perfect, thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. So welcome. Uh, so I assume that you're all Probably you've already started learning Malay or you're interested in learning Malay. Uh, so this is a very, very common question. If um, sorry, my, my computer is a bit slow. So very common question. So in Malaysia, and this is of course for the Malay language. We're not we're not learning Indonesian today. We're learning Malay, so there's a slight difference with Indonesian spelling. Uh, we say apa kabar, meaning how are you? What's the news? Uh, if you speak Arabic, it's khabar or khabar. If you speak Persian or haber, if you speak Turkish, uh, Swahili people say habari. All the same word. It it means news. So apa kabar is what is the news? How are you? Okay. And another way that we can greet each other is Sudah Makanka. Sudah Makanka, which means have you had your meal? Have you eaten? Okay, which is a very, uh, I think it's a very Malaysian way of greeting people. It, it's not a very formal way. We don't, you don't see this in textbooks, but in, in general, when we greet each other, we say, hello, have you eaten? Okay, that's very common. I will take a look at these words and we'll break them down throughout the lesson uh, to give you an idea of how the Malay language works. If you already have some knowledge of Indonesian, you will see a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. There are some little subtleties that are not the same uh, in our in our respective languages. All right, so just to give you a bit of a breakdown, where Malay is spoken, what what it's all about. Okay, so if you look at the map, uh, I think you can see my cursor, right, my mouse. So this is Malaysia and Indonesia wedge between China and Australia, this whole area. So a lot of the languages in the islands here belong to a family called Austronesian. All right, so the Filipino languages, the languages of Malaysia, Indonesia, they're all related, they're all part of the same family. And it goes all the way to Madagascar. 
on to the west. And on the east, it goes all the way to Polynesia, Hawaiian, uh, the languages of Rapa Nui, Easter Island, Tahitian, you know, New Zealand Maori, they all belong to the same family of languages. Okay, they're, they're not mutually intelligible, but they're all part of the same family of languages, just like English and, you know, Germanic and Slavic and, and uh, what is Celtic and, and, and Romance languages in Europe are related. That's how they're related. Okay, um, if we look at Malay, which is spoken in Malaysia and Originally, this language was actually spoke, used as a trade language throughout much of the region. So a lot of people in Indonesia, they don't speak Malay as a first language, they will understand it. And this has been for since uh, before, in the, before the 19th century, for, for many, many centuries, which is why even though Indonesian people, the majority of them are, more than half of Indonesians speak Javanese as a first language, but, but then they, 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 they unanimously agreed, you know, in the 1920s, 1930s, to have Bahasa Indonesia based on Malay rather than Javanese because it's already a trade language. So this is why there are two standards today. If you go to um, Southeast Asia, you have Malay, which we speak in Malaysia, Indonesia, and uh, sorry, Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore. And you have Bahasa Indonesia, which has slightly different standards, slightly different, but uh, written wise, they're not very different. We'll take a look at some, maybe we have time, ask me questions about Malay, Indonesia, and I'll tell you the difference, okay? So now let's start talking. Um, would you like to say some words? Okay, so first things first, okay. The Malay alphabet is based on English, the English alphabet, okay, which means that it has A, E, I, O, U, and the five vowels are pronounced very, very close to the way you say it in German, A, A, E, O, U, all right? With the exception of the E, the letter E has two sounds. It can be A as in, you know, Vegas, or, you know, A, Fehler in German, or Zinger, the E uh sound. It can be a, 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 a what do you call it, a full e or a short e, depending on the word. And this is not marked in the orthography. This is not marked in the spelling system. So you have to learn which words have e, which words have e. You know. Other than that, okay, uh, the c is pronounced ch, ch. Okay, the j is j, like in English. S y is unique. S y is pronounced sh. And the ng sound is ng, ng. Okay, nah. you, you have to say it like like when you in German and English you say sing, get rid of the first part and mm, the ng sound is very common in Malay. It, it's very common in all the languages of uh, Southeast Asia anyway. So nah. okay, when you have a double vowel, you pronounce it twice. So saat, saat is the word for second, like in one second, two seconds, three seconds. Saat. Okay, so let's look at some common expressions. So now. Uh, Shall we try and uh, practice? Maybe I don't know. Try. I can't hear you, but you know, just just say it out. Oh, selamat pagi. Selamat pagi is good morning. All right. And then we have selamat tengah hari, which is good afternoon. Can you say it? Yeah, I, I I'm pretending to hear you. <laughs> and then we have selamat petang. So this is pronounced. Petang, which means good evening. So in Malaysia now, it is um, it is just after six o'clock in the evening. So we are petang, selamat petang, and selamat datang is welcome. So the 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 way we use the word selamat means uh, it's a bit different from in in English. So selamat means safe, uh, well being, for example, and it comes from Arabic. Uh, salama, if you speak Arabic, it does word yeah, it's the same word. But the difference is we use it often uh, in greetings. Like, may you have a safe morning, a safe journey, a safe day, safe, safe, safe. It's not good, it's safe. That's how we say it. All right, selamat datang. Uh, you can even say selamat makan. You know, have a safe, safe food, safe eating. Instead of bon appetit, you say selamat makan. And then we learned just now, apa kabar, which is how are you, what's the news, all right? And the way we say thank you, you look at the next line, terima kasih, it literally means accept love or accept affection, accept my affections. May you accept love, may you accept my affection, it means thank you. And when you say you're welcome, we say the same, sama-sama. You know, we are both the same. The, there's nothing between us, sama-sama. If you speak languages from uh, India or, or, or uh, Persian, for example, or Turkic languages, you might recognize a few words, some of them from Persian, some words from Arabic, some words from Sanskrit. Uh, Malay is a very, very mixed language. And uh, if we have some time, We'll go into the history of Malay and how this came about. Okay. Now, uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Sorry, we say maaf. Maaf means sorry or, you know, forgive me, maaf. And then uh, to go ahead, dipersilakan means please go ahead. You know, if, if you're in a lift and somebody is in front of you, go ahead, dipersilakan. Okay. 
and uh, I think this is it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to just type it in the in the chat, and I will I will see your question. It's okay. We'll get to them later on. Now, uh, basic pronouns. So the Malay language has uh, a lot of pronouns. So I'm I'm keeping it to the very formal pronouns. So this is what you will find in textbooks. Uh, if you're reading newspapers, you often find this sort of you know these type of pronouns used. Um, in speech, it depends. So, for example, the word for I is saya. Saya means I, and it's only used usually when you're speaking with an elder or with, with the, a stranger you've just met, especially if the person is older than you, you say saya. Anda is you, and, and this is a very interesting word. It, it didn't really exist in Malay up until like the late 19th century, the early 20th century, uh, and in Indonesian as well. So it was actually invented to, to have uh, to be um, uh, like in German, Z. You know, uh, in French, vous, but like because the problem is the Malay language has many pronouns words for you depending on the age of the person you're speaking with, the rank of the person you're speaking with, whether you know the person or not, you know, and, and things like that. So we'll just simplify. Anda was invented to sort of <laughs> be an umbrella uh, term, polite umbrella term. But in, in in actual fact, nobody uses this in speech. You will see this in writing. You will see this in uh, advertising. You will see it, but in in speech you will never hear it okay but anyway i'm just putting here the, the word anda so that you can get an idea of as we move along how the sentence structure works all right um the word for he or she is dia so there's no gender okay in, in malay and then very very important the word for we there are two words for we kita and kami so kita means me and you so you are included in the conversation kita kami means only us but not you Okay, uh, it's a little bit different. If, if you speak a Polynesian language, you see what I'm talking about. Or if you speak Mandarin, or and Zaman, that kind of difference. Okay, that that kind of that's what we have in Malay. Uh, we'll we'll go through along. We'll go along. Okay, as we get to know it, as we get on more more of how these uh, words are used. And the word for they is Marika, Marika, they. All right. Uh, feel free to ask me questions in 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 the chat, and I will try to you know I will try to catch on, uh, catch up. Sorry. Now. Uh, how do we say, you know, simple phrase, my name is. Now in Malay, when you say a possessive, okay, all the pronouns, let me, let me just go back and see. All the pronouns uh, in like saya, anda, dia can also be used in, in European languages. It can be uh, nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. It's the same. It doesn't change. It never changes. What we can do is when you want to make a possession, you say my something, you put the object in front and you put a pronoun at the back. And that's it. So name is nama. Nama, yeah, and it sounds a bit like English and German, and it is. I'll tell you why later on. Nama. So my name is Nama Saya. Simple. Anda is you, so Nama Anda, your name. Uh, dia is he or she. Nama Dia, his or her name. That's it. Simple. And you can use this with any noun. So the word for book, for a book, we say buku. So my book, buku Saya. Easy, right? Buku Dia, his book, her book. Your book, buku anda, okay? Maria's book, the buku Maria. That's it. All right. So once we know this, let's go down to the next um, uh, paragraph, next line. Siapa nama anda? So siapa means who. So nama anda is your name. Who is your name? So there's no verb to be in Malay. So the it's so it's, like, it's just like I Tarzan, Tarzan, and you Jane. That's how we speak in Malay. In Malay, okay. So siapa nama anda? Namasaya Brian. My name, Brian. Easy. Would you like to practice just to say something uh, in your head? Just to, well, or if you have a partner near around you, to say it. Okay. Uh, siapa nama anda? Namasaya. So and so. All right. And introductions, very, very important introduction. Uh, when you say the word for... Um, exactly. Now, very important when you say the word for people very common word now in english you have in, in german i think you have as well orangutan orang utan okay that means man person jungle a jungle jungle person is an orangutan orang utan so the word orang meaning man or human being is the word we use with uh, nationalities so saya orang malaysia i'm a malaysian all right okay anda orang German, orang, orang Belanda, Belanda is Dutch, orang Prancis, French, orang Italy, and so on. Orang means person, it also means nationality. All right, so I say, so I am, when you say uh, introduce your job as well, you just use pronoun, job, 
Saya guru, I'm a teacher. Uh, this word comes from Sanskrit, if you if you know what a guru is. Saya pengurus, I'm a manager. Saya doctor, I'm a doctor. Okay. Uh, good questions. I, I will I will answer them once I finish. Uh, give me another ten minutes or so. All right. Now let's see. Okay. Now important bit. So the Malay language has no verb to be. So you don't say I am, you are, he is. None of that. Don't have to worry. It has no conjugations and no tenses. There's no past tense, present. You can you can show tense with other words, but generally uh, we don't use them unless you have to specify when something happens. So it's a, it's quite easy in this way. So the word orang means person or human being. So orang utan, I told you, means you know the man of the jungle. Utan is jungle. So orang Malaysia is a Malaysian. Orang German, orang America, orang China. China is China. Orang India, easy. Orang Belanda, Belanda is Dutch. Holland, uh, Hollander, Belanda. I guess it became orang Arab, orang Japan is, is Japan, Japanese, orang Korea. So you see that, that there's really, the, the nationality is just orang and the name of the country. You put it together and you have your nationality. All right. So if I ask you now, orang, orang, Malaysia, orang, you know, if I say where in Malay is mana. So anda orang mana. What does it mean? Under orang mana. So you literally means you are a where person. What where do you come from? What is your nationality? You know where do you come from, right? So under orang mana. Uh, you can even type out if you want practice on in the chat, and I will check your answers. <laughs> Good to you know. Feel free to type uh, your 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 answers under orang mana. Where are you from? Now the word for the word for UK is we we say it two ways. We can say. Sorry, I'm typing it. Where was I? Oops. Yes. So I'm, I'm trying, sorry. So, um, English, England is English. Now, the thing is, you say you're British, then we just say like this, Orang UK. Poland is Poland. Okay. What else? Greek is interesting. This word comes from Arabic. Nani is for Greek. If you're Greek, uh, the rest of the countries I think are the same. Yeah. I was it the Quebec? Was it Quebec one? Or Quebec? <laughs> okay. Or Quebec. So say or Quebec. You put your 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 the word for um, human orang, and then your country or your state or your region, whatever your city next to it, and that's it. You don't have to worry about, uh, as in English, do you, do you say, do you say uh, England, English, and German, you know, Germany, German, and all that. Yes. So uh, France is a little bit different because the Malay people couldn't pronounce France or Frances, so they said Frantis. Frantis. Uh, for Morocco, we say Orang Maghrib. Maghrib, Maghrib. Maghrib, Maghrib. That word comes from Arabic. You can also say saya berasal dari German. That is correct. It means I originate from Germany. I originally come from Germany. That is correct. Orang Maghrib. Okay. All right. So this is how we say it. Okay. Now, uh, let me just get rid of this. And move on. Okay. So, sorry. That is very good. Saya tinggal di Berlin. Exactly. I live in Berlin. Exactly. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, I'm going to go, we're going to go a little bit slowly. Let me see, we've got about, yeah, we're about halfway through now. So what we do is we look at how the structure of it, okay? We can do some practicing later on, okay? So the word for like in Malay, the, the, the Malay grammar is exactly like in English. It's a subject, the verb, and the object. It's not like in, in other, you know, subject, verb, object, yeah. Uh, it's not like in Indian languages or Turkish where you have the verb at the end. No, it's just like I do something and then object. So. I like you, saya suka anda. Suka is to like, and it, it doesn't have any tense. You don't have to worry about the future, present, whatever. Saya suka anda, okay? In order to say, I don't like, you put the word no, which is tidak, in front of the verb, that's it. Saya tidak suka anda, all right? Uh, you might've heard of this dish, uh, nasi goreng. Uh, saya makan nasi goreng, I eat fried rice, which is, I just had that two days ago. And then, Saya suka makan nasi goreng. I like to eat fried rice. So you see the way I, verb, verb, and an object. I like to eat. I like to eat fried rice. Think of it like this. There's no infinitive. There's nothing. 
I don't like to do with something, saya tidak. So, saya tidak suka makan nasi. Okay? Uh, I drink tea. Saya minum teh. Teh is uh, tea. I don't drink tea. Saya tidak minum teh, for example. All right? Uh, another word you can say, saya or my friend Farzad tulis buku. I'm writing, he's writing a book. Farzad tidak tulis buku. He's not writing a book. Pretty much that's about how it goes, okay? Yes, I, uh, Anna, yes, I can, I can, um, I'll, I'll find a way to send you the presentation or I can share it. Yes, I, I believe so. It's actually, the, the presentation is actually being recorded. So you, they will actually, you can actually see it, access it online somewhere. I think I'll, I'll check with the, with, the, with the organizers in any case. All right. Now, let's see. All right. All right. So let us go. Okay. So a little bit about the history. We've got about 10 more minutes. So maybe I'll talk about history. So why the Malay language is so mixed. So in, in ancient times, all right, um, there was actually, if you can see my, my, my cursor, there was a major, oh, oops, sorry, oops, I've gone too far. <laughs> there we go. So if you look at, so if you see my cursor, um, there's actually from China all the way down to Singapore, if you can see here, there's a red line that goes across and from Indonesia all the way to the south of India and into Arabia and even into Africa. So that was actually the spice route. You've got the Silk Road and you've got a spice road. So Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, sorry, uh, not Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia were in fact major exporters of spices, a lot of spices. So from, from that area, you have cloves, you have nutmeg, uh, different types of cinnamon. Uh, we've got uh, things like black pepper, all this coming from this region. And they all ended up in the Middle East and into Europe. So this has been going on for thousands of years. And because of the people moving back and forth all the time, uh, you have a lot of uh, trade and you have contact with people from different countries and cultures and religions. So for example, the Malay people in ancient times, they were Hindu. So they, they, they converted to Hinduism because of contact with Indian traders. And then when the Arabs came and the Persians came, they became Muslim. So religion changing many times, the, the language itself as well has been enriched with borrowings from all over the world. That's why you have, if, you, if you speak an Indian language, you see, you might notice the word for like is sukha. It's from the Sanskrit sukha or suk, which means pleasure or liking, for example. The word nama means name and it comes from Sanskrit, which is also related to English and German and all the Indo-European languages. That's why you see the similarities as well. Uh, guru means teacher, for example. Uh, for a student, you can say murid. Murid is student, that's from Arabic, for example. So things like this, uh, these these words are a lot of, a lot of uh, I would say more than half of the vocabulary comes from somewhere else. That's in that's in Malay, okay. And uh, yeah, got eight more minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to tidy up. And uh, yeah, uh, so that's that's my uh, that that's my area for my part done for now. So just just to let you know, uh, I work for a company called Utalk. So we have a learning app. We have an app where you can learn Malay, for example, and other many many other languages. We've got over 145, 144 languages coming and more and more all the time. So, so my email is brian at utalk.com. You get in touch. I've got a blog. Uh, I've got the Instagram and Twitter as well. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, you can email them to me. Now, if I don't, you know, I don't, you know, we don't finish this conversation in time, then feel free to send me an email or, you know, something on, 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 on Instagram, for example. Okay. And that's it. I'm going to stop sharing now and we'll go to have a, a quick, like five minute uh, question and answer session, five, six minutes. Okay. Right. Terima kasih. So, terima kasih, everybody. Terima kasih. And when you say terima kasih to me, I have to say, sama-sama. Sama-sama. Okay. Right. So, let, let me look at your question. Um, that's good. Right. Okay. So, um, I think somebody, else, I'm just scrolling up again. All right, so yes, yes, feel free to get connected. Uh, let me see. Siapa nama dia? Yes, who it literally means, who is his name or her name is what is his name is in, yes. Okay, now let, let me just go back and, okay, so, okay, so uh, Hanan says you don't have, a, exactly, we don't, we don't have any uh, different alphabets. Uh, in ancient times, the Malay language was written in an adaptation of a South Indian script. So, <laughs> and then it was replaced by Arabic script. And then about a hundred 
100 years ago uh, by the Roman alphabet. So it went through a few reforms and changes and all, but we used ABC and we don't have any special letters. We don't have any accent, uh, any accents and, and you find in German and French, umlaut, whatever. We don't have it at all, which might be easier to learn, I guess. Uh, Gabriel says, uh, hello, Gabriel. It, it's a pretty pretty easy language to learn. The, 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 the main difficulty with Western people have that there are two difficulties. Number one, the use of the correct pronouns, you and him, I and you, whatever, we are in, in, because we are very, very particular about politeness. So sometimes you, you can't say the wrong you know, pronoun to the wrong person. It could be you know, uh, insulting. The same thing in Japan, Korea, and, and if you learn Thai, Vietnamese, the same, same problem. Secondly, I think um, the other problem, I think, with, with people who learn Malay, Indonesian, especially, uh, there's a big difference between the right rhythm system and, and the... Um, the colloquial register. So there's a casual speech and formal speech is quite a big difference. So if you learn one from, if you learn to read from, from a book, for example, you might not understand what people are saying on the streets. That, that's that's the, the main difference, I guess. All right. Um, yes, and instead of saying tidak, you can as well, or the word for no, you can also say, so you basically you shorten it, tidak, which means no. Okay. Uh, we don't have different words from masculine and feminine, so all the words are the same. So, for example, even the word for child, son or daughter, is anak. Anak means son or daughter. You, in order to, if you want to specify, you have to put my male child or my female child. So, anak lelaki is my son, son, anak lelaki, and a daughter is anak, for example. So, uh, if you say, uh, the word for Malay is Malayu. So, saya suka bahasa Melayu. Or, saya suka orang Melayu. <laughs> so, that's the difference. Uh, Anna is asking, what are the reasons people learn Malay? Well, uh, this is interesting because in Malaysia, a lot of people speak English quite well. So, uh, if you're a foreigner, you come to Malaysia, you will actually hear people respond to you in English, even if you try to speak to them in broken Malay, they will reply to you in English. It's very common. Um, I would say it's an interesting thing to learn because Malay, Indonesian are, are, are part of a, a, a very, have a, a, a complex history and relationship. So so a lot of people, more people actually learn Indonesian than Malay because the fact is when you go to Indonesia, 99%, well, 90% of the population does not speak English. So you have to use <laughs> Indonesian. Whereas in Malaysia, 90% of the people pop of the population can actually understand uh, English. So <laughs> maybe that's why. But it, it, it's an interesting thing if you, especially if you're studying history, because the Malay language is an example of uh, a culture, a language that has borrowed a very syncretic, in a very syncretic way, many elements from other cultures as well. So, so if, if you speak, uh, I have friends from Iran who who said when they would hear Malay, they actually understand quite a lot of the words because there are a few words that actually come from Persian, not Arabic, from Persian, and some from Turkish and some from Chinese and all that. So it's a very mixed language. And you actually see where which domain the word is from. You can actually see who borrowed what at which period from who. So historically, if you like anthropology, for example, Malay is a very, 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 very interesting case of linguistic anthropology, you know, uh, which cultures came in contact with whom and who traded with whom and what. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, Regina is asking, is there more equality between men and women because there are no genders in Malay? This is an inter interesting question. I think, yes, if you compare Malay, because particularly because the Malay culture at the moment is, is, is becoming more and more Islamic. There's a lot of Islamic influence. Um, Muslim women in Malaysia have more freedom than Muslim, uh, to be honest, I, I'm being biased, but they have much more freedom than Muslim women in Pakistan or in, in, in many parts of the Middle East, for example. Uh, in, in, in a relationship for in, in Malaysia, for example, uh, men and women in, in a marriage are considered equal. So you often have cases where the, the wife is working and husband stays at home, whatever. There, there's no stigma, for example, if a man doesn't work and his wife works. There, there, this kind of culture, there, there's, there's really, uh, the genders are really more equal in Malaysia, for example. Uh, okay, SK is asking, how similar is Malay to Filipino? Oh, yes, that's right. So that, that would be my colleague <laughs> uh, has sent a message. Okay, so check out, okay, so check out Expo Lingua uh, online. Uh, so if you see the link, that's, that's basically, we're having actually, uh, uh, well, yes, we're having a lucky prize draw as well. So check out the link and see what we have. Okay, so my colleagues are uh, promoting a very, very special prize draw. All right, uh, last question. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to be very fast now. We're almost done. So maybe one more question. Okay, so uh, Malay, Indonesian are very, very close. They are actually the same language with different registers. So Malay has more English loan words, for example. Indonesian has more Dutch, but they're quite intelligible. Filipino is a different language. It's, it's about as different from Malay as English and German, for example. All right. And I think that's it. So and I'll, I'll squeeze in one last, one last bit. Okay, so... Um, so, so one way we say you is we use your title. So, hello, how are you? If you know the person's title, you can say doctor, auntie, uncle. You can use that as, as the way we say you. How is uncle? How is big brother? How is how is father? You know, for example, rather than you. All right. Okay, uh, that's it. I'm done. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. And you've been very, very polite. <laughs> thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, danke schön.